first lecture, discussing what management's all about. What are the roles of managers? And secondly, how managerial accounting supports the manager in all those roles, or many of those roles. Now, to begin with, let's look at all the duties that a manager performs. You can think of them all. But now we're looking at categorizing them uh, into four broad functional areas. Some of the activities a manager will perform are planning activities. You're responsible for planning the activities for a particular part of this business. You're responsible for the, uh, planning the activities of the employees who work for you. So therefore, they're planning and you're looking to the future to make sure that you're setting the goals that meet the company goals and that uh, your plans are good. At the same time, you're directing the people you're working f that are working for you. You're directing them, make sure they understand what their roles are. You're hiring them, you're training them. Then you are also controlling. You are measuring their performance and you're determining whether things are happening the way you plan them. And if they're not, what you have to do to put them back on track. And there are other activities you perform which are decision making. And there are many times you're called on as a manager to make decisions. So we're going to look at these more closely. First of all, the planning. You have to plan the activities for your area of responsibility, which means you must look ahead into the future. You must establish your goals and objectives. And your objective should be to increase the profits of this organization. In other words, your key objective is to add value to the business. Now, how do you add value? Well, you improve on the bottom line. How do you improve on the bottom line? You become more efficient and you become more effective. The activities you perform are more efficient or they're more effective. When you think of managerial accounting, I want, to think, I want you to think of the two financial statements you learned in financial accounting. You learned about the balance sheet. Now, the balance sheet tells what the company owns, the assets it has, who it owes, and the equity. Those kind of uh, issues around the borrowing and issuing shares, there are managerial financial issues. Management accounting, it's about the income statement. For example, we have the income statement of Paul's Guitar Company for the year, year end of December 31st, 2015. Think of this income statement as a statement of operations. Now, what you see here is the income statement prepared according to generally accepted accounting principles, the revenues detailed and the expenses. And of course, revenues exceed the expenses, we have net income. That's fine. Now, in financial accounting, you use the term expense and you only had one definition for expense. It was consumed in the production of revenue. The language changes a bit here in management accounting. When you're looking at the income statement, we don't refer to expenses so much anymore. We call them costs. And how those costs affect the bottom line. 
So revenue minus cost, and there are many different types of cost, and in this course you will learn many different definitions of costs. And as a manager, you must be very familiar with what each of these costs referred to. Another way I want you to look at the income statement is, up above you have the revenues, that's the sales, the production and sales that they had achieved uh, in the course of the year. And the costs then in achieving them. Well, you see, revenues are the outputs of the company. Think of them as what the company has produced in terms of outputs. And of course, then the costs are considered as inputs into the production of the outputs. So when that is clear, then you can see that efficiency, efficiency is defined as getting the same output with less inputs. So you're becoming more efficient if you can achieve the same output with less costs. Or you can become more effective and or you can become more effective by achieving more output with the same inputs. That's the definition of effectiveness. And I did not spell that right, so I'll have to change this. <laughs> uh, it's effectiveness. Okay, so you become more effective by achieving greater output with less input. And that's your goal in adding value to the company. You add value to the firm by increasing the efficiency and the effectiveness of the activities you manage. Now, the second group of responsibilities are directing. You have to direct the activities for your responsible. Here you're coordinating. You're making sure plan objectives are being understood and properly done. You're providing incentives. You're hiring and training. Now, this is an important management function, but it's very specific to the kind of company or kind of area you're managing. Is it IT or marketing or what have you? Management accounting doesn't have much to say about directing. What you learn about hiring and training, you learn in other courses. Management accounting, though, has a lot to say about controlling your third functional area. Here, you have to keep make sure the, the activities are on track. You're measuring performance. You're determining whether goals are being met. And lastly, good decisions. The effect of good decision is the outcome of good judgment in planning, controlling, and direct. How does managerial accounting fit into this? Well, to begin with, managerial accounting is a field of accounting. There's financial accounting and management accounting. It's a field of accounting that provides economic and financial information, but to managers, not people outside the business, only people inside the business. Now, managerial accounting is also an oftentimes called management accounting. And sometimes I use those terms interchangeably myself. Now, how do they support the managers? Well, here are managers, is, think of managerial accounting, this course, as a series of tools and techniques that have been developed over the years by managers themselves. And some of these techniques help you plan, some, some of these tools help you control, some of these tools help you make decisions. So in planning, managers must know their cost and how they change when activities increase or decrease. The planning tools learned in this course are cost behavior. You have to know how costs will change when I want to increase my sales. That will lead you to cost volume profit analysis, which is a very valuable technique in predicting what our profit would be in the future at different levels of activity. We also take the income statement, which was prepared for generally accepted accounting principles, and we rearrange the costs into what's called a contribution margin income statement. We can then perform contribution margin analysis. And lastly, budgeting planning. All of these tools that are part of this course are very important to management 
in the planning role. In the controlling of operations, here you must evaluate performance. And in order to do that, you must understand the cost accumulation systems, like job cost and activity-based costing. You will learn what is meant by responsibility accounting. You'll be introduced to standard costing methods, and that will lead to variance analysis, where you're comparing what actually is happening to what you plan to happen. And you look at the variance. You focus on the difference. You'll understand how to put together performance reports because performance evaluation is a big part of your job description. And lastly, the new concept introduced recently is called the balance scorecard. Lastly, you'll be called on to make decisions. Now here your focus changes from cost to cash flows, cash in and cash out. And you'll learn techniques that help you make informed decisions, i.e. identify your problem, develop alternatives to solving that problem, understand how to use incremental analysis, also known as differential analysis, understand relevant costing techniques, and your goal here is to make a decision that leaves the company better off. Remember, you have to add value. Now, when we look at the activities you perform in the managerial accounting area, you're gathering, as a manager, you're gathering, presenting relevant data for decision making. You're evaluating different alternative ways of doing things. You're assisting in profit planning. You're formalizing plans and budgets. You're helping control costs by actually comparing to what actually happened to planned costs and uh, capital expenditure decisions. These are all roles, activities you perform as a manager. This course is about the tools you'll need to perform those. Now, I'm using a manufacturing company, or we use a manufacturing company as an example, but they all apply to a service company. Any company where management is managing merchandise as well as manufacturing, and single proprietorships, partnerships, or corporations. These concepts are valid for nonprofit, government, and profit oriented companies, of course, management. Lastly, I want to compare managerial accounting to financial accounting. Now, the similarities, they both deal with economic events, and they both require that these events be quantified and communicated. However, that's where the similarities end. Financial accounting is for people outside the business. You're recording exactly what happened. So it's actually happened. It's history. And you're recording it and presenting it to people outside the business so they can understand what's going on. Management accounting is only for managers. It's for internal users. And it's not just dealing with what happened in the past. It's forward thinking. We're planning the future. The reports that we produce are many types of reports for whatever what the manager wants. They wants to know what the sales were last year compared to the year before and so on. In financial accounting, you, you have the balance sheet and the income statement. Financial accounting is general purpose for the whole company. Management accounting is for subunits. So those are some of the key differences in financial accounting and managerial accounting.